only 3%, only 3% CIO answered that using machine learning across business. So basically this 3% is level four. 20% using machine learning in some area of business. So this is, corresponds to level three. 60%, more than 60%, almost two thirds of CIO answers that they are still in level one and level two. And basically, people are saying that it will take three to five years to shift your AI adaptive level, maturity level from level one, two, two, three, and four. So this is uh, currently the, the, the uh, uh, stat in the industry how much you know, people are using machine learning. People are starting to use machine learning, but adaptation is not that fast, uh, not yet good enough. So basically, AutoML, we are here today to help to accelerate this movement to adapt AI machine learning data science to your business. The machine learning data science project, there is a lot of work to be done before machine learning, and that upfront effort is very, very challenging. And also, typically, domain expertise is one of the key for the successful data science project. But you know, business people are very, very busy. And we make the question to the business people, and the answer comes in, in, in after one week. And the you know, project cannot move as fast as we expect. Many people are interested in, but not yet implemented. Or well, some people are doing some evaluation pilot and uh, some people, 20% of people, don't know what is AutoML. So I, I can talk a little bit about what is AutoML actually for this audience today. What is AutoML? So basically, this is uh, my understanding of basic concept of AutoML. So machine learning basically requires a, a flat table for, as an input. But flat table is not necessarily means that it's ready for machine learning or it guarantees you for the good accuracy. Okay. So there is a feature cleansing, which means that the missing value imputation or outlier filter or data normalization, standardization, this kind of cleansing, certain cleansing effort is required. Feature selection, dimensional deduction, your original table has 100 or even 1,000 columns. So you have to reduce the dimensionality at the input of machine learning. Or sometimes you want to boost the number of columns. Right? One hot encoding is a very simple method to transform categorical variable into the binary vector. Or well, polynomial transformation is something like A times B, or A divided by B, or A plus B type of you know, a, a transformation to generate nonlinear features. Well, temporal aggregation is a very, very standard way to handle time series data, like a moving average method or this kind of thing. And then you once clean up the feature table and come to the machine learning. So you have to select the algorithm. There is a different type of algorithm, like a boosting or neural network. These are typically the most accurate in most of applications. On the other hand, they, they are very highly uh, nonlinear and complex. So particularly financial service, many applications prefer transparent model, like a linear model or decision tree. So which algorithm to use? Or well, hyperparameter search. Machine learning algorithm is not just a box, but you have to carefully tune the parameter with training data. Grid search or Bayesian optimization, there is a lot of way to automatically search the hyperparameters. And of course, you have to validate your accuracy. And accuracy is not just a single measure. There is a, a lot of different aspects in accuracy. So you have to validate the model in very, very different aspect and choose and pick the model, which, is, which satisfies your business requirement. So this, these are not everything. But the major part of what AutoML can automate for you, like it can try different type of cleansing method, and then different type of machine learning method automatically using distributed computing, and then assess the model accuracy and produce the best one for you. So this is a basic concept of AutoML. So this is a picture. So you have the business case, you have the problem, 
now you have machine learning, visualization, and production. Otamo can shorten the time. Is this true? So in our experience, this is not necessarily true in many projects. In our experience, there is a still fairly big gap between your business use case and machine learning. So what is this? So basically, this is a work around the data. So machine learning is statistical and a mathematical method. And, but even if you, you are financial service, I believe that you are, you are storing fair data in fairly good manner, polite manner, because you are regulated. But still, even if that's the case, there is a lot of customization work required to make your data available for machine learning. Collecting data, or what we call last mile ETL, we are a little bit distinguished terminology from master data management, um, but every analytics use case, machine learning use case, you need a customized ETL work. And also feature engineering, you have to generate a lot of hypotheses to combine different type of tables to come up with input to machine learning. So Otama is great, but in our experience, there's a still a lot of work you have to do before machine learning. So a little bit more conceptual figure, why, what is this process about? The gap between AutoML and real data. So left-hand side is what we usually observe in enterprise. So there are the different, different data, maybe Customer is very easy, so you, if banking, online banking transactional data, their account balance history transaction, well, of course, they have, there, there's a, a basic customer demographic information, or there's a lot of data around the customer. And this data is not, never flat, single aggregated table. And the, every machine learning use case, you need a lot of, you know, uh, uh, aggregation combination to come up with input, this feature table. So in polls, uh, many people, I think one third of the people in this room said there are the domain expertise, high cost to the domain expertise is one of the key pains that you have. And basically this is uh, typically the stage that you have to put the domain expertise first because you have to first understand what are these tables, sometimes columns, you have the hundreds of columns, the thousands of columns, you have to understand these columns, or given use case, what are the patterns you have to generate? You have to understand what is this you know, business use case. So this is a part you have to encode your domain expertise in the format of feature table. So this is why, you know, this is one of the largest gap, gap we are seeing beyond AutoML. In addition, to, in addition to complexity of data, there is a different type of data, actually. So it's not just everything is numeric data or categorical data, which is fairly easy to handle. But data can be, flat data is very uh, simple, but there's a relational structure, normalized data, ski, star schema, or OLAP type of structure. Or typically what we see, what we have seen is data architecture is not necessarily very clean in enterprise. It is called structured data, but we typically refer not well structured data. It's structured, but not really good way. Well, you have a lot of transactional data. Well, of course, every enter all enterprise data are eventually temporal, right? There's a timestamp. Well, recently, a lot of people are interested in geolocational data or even temporal and geo, so geotemporal data to understand the spatial behavior, customer's behavior or whatever behavior it is. Well, text data is also very popular in enterprise. For example, call center, you have the voice from the customers, and it's a text transactional data. How can you extract a, a meaningful information from text transactional data? So this is mostly be the, the, the process before machine learning. This is a very big gap between your data and your problem and stage of AutoML. 
So let me a little bit more describe the concrete case. So this is a very simple case study. So in bank, so there is a customers who has a checking account and saving account. So you want to identify which customers are going to sign up the home mortgage loan. This is a very typical upsell cross sell case. Then, maybe this is uh, your data. This is very, very simplified. Yeah, actual project, we have some you know, tens of tables. In uh, this case, only six tables. So there's a one table, which is called the target table, mortgage application. And this table is basically something what you want to predict. Customer ID and the application flag. This is a one is sign up or zero is not sign up. And then there's a five table, customer attribute table. This is a basic customer information, web transactional table. Of course, there is online banking. And uh, one customer can have the multiple account in bank. So there's account master and each account is associated with the balance history and the store. So this is a type of data we are typically handling in the enterprise. And maybe some data are just exported from CRM system, so in CSV format. Mm -hmm. Big transaction data is typically stored in Hadoop or big data storage, so it's maybe stored in Hive. Or some traditional you know, data is stored in Oracle or relational uh, database system. So even data can be stored in different places. So in this case, so first of all, to start AutoML, you have to first process this data, transform this, this data, and come up with this flat single table. So what are features actually right, in this case? So there are the features that we can create after aggregation, and there are the feature we have to create before aggregation. So features after aggregation usually looks like this. So customer attribute table, this is already flat table. So there is a ID, name, gender, age, income, number of family members, and so on and so forth. So we can apply certain mathematical transformation, for example, log age times exponential income divided by number of family members. So this kind of nonlinear transformation is sometimes very useful to improve the accuracy. On the other hand, why data and the feature engineering process takes time, which is mainly the features generation before aggregation, actually to aggregate the data. So for example, feature in the right hand side is a customer who withdraw a lot of money for uh, past half a year, and occupation is engineer. Maybe this is an engineer customer who spent a lot of money recently. Maybe a young engineer who is not buying a home uh, in short period of time. So this type of customer may not going to uh, 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 sign up the home mortgage loan. So these are the type of features we have to generate before machine learning. But these features are actually not very easy to create. Oops, sorry. So for example, this is how we are going to generate a feature from these four tables. You don't need to read all the query. Uh, you don't need to validate this query is correct or not. But I, <laughs> I want you to sense that how complex this uh, uh, query is which means that if we are talking about this feature, you can write this in a single line of code on Python, as long as you have the data. But even if you have the data, generating this type of feature before aggregation to come up with an input to machine learning, this requires a certain amount of work. And this is just a feature one. Right? And Many projects, you have to generate a feature two, three, four, up to 100. Actually, this is a feature two. So you have to write a very different type of query. By the way, yeah, so actually, why we started this project? I had a project in New Zealand and back to 2013. And that is a charm prediction project with a very large telecom customer. 
And that project, I and my data scientist, two of us, write 3,400 queries to generate a feature from more than 10 tables. And that, that work itself took months. And that time, we, we believed that, oh, this is something that we have to help because a lot of people have the same pain before machine learning process. So overall, beyond the machine learning, we strongly believe that there is a strong need and acceleration required for accelerating this feature engineering and the data engineering process. So these are the some, some examples. For example, there's the data formatting issues. Oh, by the way, we are not saying like, I'm not saying like we are addressing all these issues. We are solving quite a good amount of these issues, but not everything. But I'm listing the challenge here. So data formatting issue, for example, raw data cleansing issue. Raw data cleansing is different from feature cleansing. Like a, raw data cleansing is not missing value or outliers. But the raw data cleansing is for the value itself is not very well formatted. Okay? Or, or value need to be aggregated. For example, upper character or lower character issue or these kind of issues. Value itself are dirty. Or data integration and unification issue, as I show in the previous slide, data can come from different source. In that case, data meta information are different. Right? Oracle, Postgres, CSV, their data meta information are all different. To, to, to handle them in a unified uh, way, we need a certain data integration work. And the feature engineering, to come to feature engineering part, we have to you know, do the data re-architecting in many, many cases because, as I said, data is not well structured and not very easy to even to join the table. Or hypothesis search, this is the uh, most difficult part because this is basically relying on domain expertise. So how can we automate this part without a lot of intervention by domain expert? Combination, aggregation, segmentation, there's a lot of hype, you know, way to do that. And the query generation. Query generation is basically just you know, generating this type of query, but it's not that simple if you know the data engineering. Uh, you may know that the data sparseness issue or data scale is also very different. When it comes to the machine learning, it's already aggregated, so data is fairly small. But if we are talking about a raw table, maybe you are talking about billions of records, tens of billions of records in one transactional data, or even larger in, in large financial service. So data scale issue, or data skewness. This is very uh, uh, well-known issue in, in data engineering world. So just writing query itself is not a very easy job in this world, because data is so complex and so large. And of course, which hypothesis is good? Because there is an infinite number of hypotheses, so we have to validate it and select it. So automated feature engineering, in our you know, view, is to help you to automate this process and accelerate the entire uh, uh, data science flow. So basically, this is our product offering. So um, this is one slide. Basically, we have the uh, AutoML component, but our unique strengths and our unique offer that I want you to uh, try is basically AI-powered feature engineering. So we have a very unique problem understanding in this data and the feature engineering part, and uh, you know, uh, achieve the quite significant success to automate quite good amount of the work before machine learning. I don't say we automate everything, but I believe that we can automate a lot of work before uh, machine learning. <coughs>